If you let an obviously cursed bone shiv possess your body and start killing your friends, what would you do? Hurt people, hurt people, as the old saying goes. In this case, it's more of a brutally murdered child brutally murders children situation. Regardless, it leaves our underprepared and frankly unimaginative group of baffled teens on the hook for outsmarting the child demon they've unleashed into their lives before it's too late. Little Danny just wants to play, so let's play. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the witch's hex in all fun and games. On the cursed ground of Salem, Massachusetts, where injustice salted the earth with blood long ago, ravaged Puritan children futilely cling to life. An older boy steps out of a nearby home, whispering that he won't quit the game they're already playing before raising a bone knife to his throat and slicing. Nearly 400 years later, a voice calls out from the ruined cabin to a passing kid named Joe, who immediately breaks in through the window to investigate. In the old wood stove, he and his brother Marcus find the dirty old bone knife and a diary full of witchy sh**. Marcus tells him to put it back, but wouldn't you know it, the knife finds its way into Joe's backpack. Joe sets up the little archaeologist's cleaning station on his bed and digs in with an old toothbrush. Words are etched on the bone blade. I won't play. I won't quit. As soon as the words leave his mouth, the lights flicker and he's bombarded with flashes of the carnage we saw earlier. The older boy who killed that lot in Salem long ago. Instead of running to Marcus for help, Joe gets swept away with more cleaning. There's additional words written on the other side of the bone. Tell me demon. Of course, because he's 12 and has no self-preservation skills yet, he says the words out loud, drawing a malevolent force right to him. Before he can say the last part, Marcus interrupts. Joe hides the blade, but it calls to him no matter where he goes in the house. Marcus and their sister Billy notice his change in behavior immediately, but without more context, they have no clue why why he's different and don't bother to investigate. When Billy's best friend Sophie and boyfriend Pete join the party and their deadbeat Uncle Bob leaves his basement, conversation shifts to talk of the party, but the voices in Joe's head don't like that idea. They tell him not to let them leave, to make them play the game with him. Joe turns on a dime, guilting and manipulating them into staying, pointing out their worst shortcomings like he's trying to beat the Guinness World Record for fastest family fight. Then he says he'll let them go with without narking if they play the game with him first. Trade rules established. The teens gather in the living room. He makes each of them say, I will play, I won't quit. The lights flicker and the knife comes out of his bag. To their credit, the teens immediately leap up to take it from him and Marcus wrestles it away. Not to their credit, everyone except Marcus just scatters like their kid brother didn't just pull a giant knife out of his bag. The whispering voices creep into Marcus's ears now while using Joe like a puppet. He screeches at Marcus to say all of the words on the blade. I will play. I won't quit. Tell me, demon. Am I it? Ooh, it rhymes and everything. In some dark, forgotten place, an eye opens. A tremor runs through Joe, and the voices leave him. He's just a little boy again. Just bad news for Marcus. <laughs> Marcus wakes in bed, where Bob took him after he blacked out. Joe says Bob was too high to drive him to a hospital. Guess you're sh out of luck. I mean, obviously, there's no other way to get there. Whatever. We'll just walk it off. He forces Joe to tell him where he hid the knife. Marcus locks himself away in the bathroom, where the demon in the blade takes control. <laughs> When Joe opens the door, he finds Marcus with the X carved into his forehead. Charles Manson has claimed another one. Marcus whispers, let's play, and Joe bolts. He wakes Bob, but whimpers and mumbles an explanation Bob isn't prepared to listen to. Instead, Bob spots Marcus outside, and they follow him to a tree, where he's already rigged a noose and says he wants to play a game of hangman. Bob notices the carving on his forehead, and because he's not the world's worst uncle, he rushes forward to help, rather than sprinting away. When he gets too close, Marcus ensnares him in the noose and tosses Joe into a wall. Let me go, man. Let me. Four letters. 
Help that's me. not it. Uh, not to be that guy, but that's not how you play Hangman. Marcus finally asks for a letter, then lowers Bob down when he guesses one right, lifting him when he guesses another wrong. Uh, again, the whole point of Hangman is to guess the word. How can we guess the word if you don't tell us where the letters fall in the word? Am I being too pedantic with a demon? Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Joe's the real wet blanket here. Despite being a child of divorce and a lower middle class family, he's the baby. So he's super sheltered with a brain underdeveloped for strategizing. If we'd prepared our kid properly, he'd be up sprinting to the neighbor's house while Marcus is busy, finding an adult and a phone to call in reinforcements. Instead, he just disappears. That's cool. Not like we wanted to know what he did next or anything. Marcus has places to be too. He heads over to the party, which is made up of all of six people, and asks Sophie and Pete if they're ready to play. The girl who owns the house tells him to leave, so he takes her hostage, demanding all the kids toss their phones into the fire. I mean, there's definitely a landline inside, so if you'll excuse me. Marcus says he wants to play hide and seek. Pete and his friends aren't feeling it. <laughs> Guys, in most fights when no one else has a weapon, the dude with the knife wins. Especially when no one is a Croft Maga expert and the guy with the knife is acting erratic like he's high on something or crazy we're not rushing anybody unless we want to end up like that guy remember marcus is giving us time he told us this is a game so we're using that time and playing his game to feel out the situation say yes to playing hide and seek but see if he'll let the girl with the knife to her throat play too what we need is distance and he's giving us the perfect opportunity to run and use that head start to find a phone, vehicle, or ambush spot. You don't de-escalate situations with mentally disoriented people by fighting them. You talk them down and try to build a rapport. This is literally exactly what happens, just very slowly, costing us our entire head start. Sophie finally tells him the girl wants to play, and he releases. The girl runs, then we run, with three seconds to do anything. If this demon wasn't trying to play with its food, we'd be dead already. Lucky for us, this demon demon has been deprived of stimulation for too long and goes after the kid who ran first. The guy tries to hide in a super conspicuous random cabin. A wounded Pete chooses the barn, but doesn't even go for the vehicle parked inside or any of the sharp tools just laying everywhere. The party girl appears right when Marcus does, and they limp stupidly up into the hayloft. Again, for what reason? What's up there? You're just trapping yourselves. Nearby in the woods, Billy's wandering aimlessly following some unrelated teen drama when Joe finally reappears on a bike. Unfortunately, Joe picked the wrong semi-adult to talk to. He tells her Marcus killed Uncle Bob, but she doesn't believe him. Until Sophie shows up confirming that Marcus has gone ape sh Joe says it isn't really him, and leads them away to look for the diary. Back in the barn, Pete grabs a shovel while the girl hides in a bale of hay, after leaving her coat right on top of her hiding spot. <laughs> leaving a coat somewhere can be a great misdirect, if it's actually a misdirect. Marcus knows exactly where she is, so he continues on to Pete instead. Found you. I'm sorry, what kind of swipe was that? Is this six and a half foot tall man's head down by your knees? Marcus goes for the girl next. <laughs> What? You mean hay isn't made out of chainmail? At the original cabin, Billy reads from the journal. It says that a woman who was accused of witchcraft had an X carved into her head. She fled with her son Daniel into the woods, but the townsfolk found him. Children carved the same X into his head, then made him play torturous games with them before they pulled out his teeth. Billy says she can't read anymore, but the cabin spirits won't hear of it. This is insane! Read that book! Read that book! She keeps reading. Next fell, I think, chased his crippled 
body with torches. See, Daniel is dead. I will have vengeance. The witch appears and villain monologues at them that she made the knife from her son's bone, then gave it to the children who killed him. Daniel's spirit emerged to get vengeance, but now he kills anyone who plays with the knife. Bullied kids becoming bullies, man. Cycle of life. The witch says it only ends when Daniel wins. Billy asks what happens if they win. The witch cackles and disappears. Based on the witch's carefully curated flashbacks, Joe realizes what the next game will be. Tag. He takes the girls home to grab flashlights, saying they can chase Marcus in a game of flashlight tag like the kids chased Daniel with torches. This way, they can potentially win without actually hurting him. Sounds great, unless Daniel decides to play with actual torches. Not to mention, none of these games are actually winnable. That's kind of the point. They weren't winnable for Daniel, and they aren't winnable for us. Hangman ends with the hanged man dismembered or dead. Hide and seek, by Daniel's definition, ends with him killing anyone he finds. So, we need to trick him into playing a winnable game, but we'll get back to that. Joe finds Pete's body in the closet, which is kind of funny, all things considered. Imagine Marcus just hefting this dude's dead body on his shoulder and carrying him all the way back here for the slim chance that a kid we're scaring opens this specific door. Anyway, he eventually catches Marcus on the stairs. <laughs> This is the other reason these games aren't winnable. A merciless opponent willing to emotionally manipulate you can't lose. You're always going to be the bigger and deader person if empathy becomes your weakness. Plus, we're back to the same problem we had with Hangman. Joe tags Marcus, but then he keeps looking for him. This isn't how tag works. If you tag someone, they're it, and they have to chase you. Did no one in the production of this movie have an actual childhood? Fortunately for us, this means we can beat this ghost pretty damn easily. How? Be patient, nerds. We'll get there. The girls finally enter the game without explanation as to why they weren't already playing, and Joe warns them the flashlight will actually burn if it touches them. Joe spots blood and gets the girls to train their lights on Marcus above them, but Billy stops, afraid for Marcus's safety. <laughs> When Marcus falls, he finally drops the knife. If it were me, I'd have the girls already ready with a rope to tie him up like a Buster Keaton train victim, and I'd be sprinting to the nearest church with holy water and a place to start a fire with that knife in my hand. Wrap it in rosaries, get it blessed, and set it on fire. Really, just hide the d thing. Earlier, when Marcus first woke up possessed, he had to ask Joe where the knife was, which means he couldn't sense it. The knife is the cursed tool here, the source of this thing's power. Preventing Marcus from having it and destroying or using it is our top priority. Instead, the kids just kind of stand there for several seconds until Sophie gets way too close. Marcus springs back up and turns the torch on her. <laughs> Billy remembers the knife and slashes his wrist, actually wounding him. They hide behind the couch, and Billy realizes the words on the knife cursed Marcus to be the vessel. So, she says them herself and gets taken into the ghost's world. Maybe do this when you've strategized literally anything, but actually, and now that we know that the very knife that gives him power is his weakness, we can beat him super easily by using his own games against him. Any game of mimicry will work, like Simon Says. Simon Says, let me kill you with your knife. Or Simon Says, kill yourself with your knife. And it's over. At every turn, this ghost has obeyed the games, even when they weren't advantageous for him. So we end him by starting a new one we can very easily win. It's that simple. These guys eventually figure this out, but they have additional trauma to go through first. Marcus wakes again, but they do absolutely jack all. They don't even use the time wisely while she's unconscious to tie her up or take the knife and hide it. In the ghost world, Billy's surrounded. When they attack, she fights back. <laughs> She wakes on the couch, still herself, with her hand covered in Daniel's blood from where she wounded him. There's no explanation as to why the ghost couldn't take her, so don't expect one. Even though they're all themselves again, she's brought someone back with her. 
doors creak open on their own. The ghost locks the boys in a closet and baits Billy and Sophie to chase after it. Yeah, nah, it hasn't declared a game, so we can take this time to figure out a strategy. We're not following ghouls into the dark, but of course, they do. Demon Daniel attacks, very easily knocking grown children aside, until Daniel finally realizes what we figured out a few minutes ago and baits him into a semi-winnable game. I want to play! I drove her. Send Daniel right over. <laughs> Daniel crumbles to dust. Marcus gets arrested for several murders, and the knife reappears in the old cabin, waiting for its next victim. If you ever find yourself caught in the twisted game of a malevolent child demon, remember, sometimes working within the constraints of their own nonsense is your best option. Use their own rules against them. For that reason, I think all fun and games was beat. Now, I want to play a game. Nerd says, go watch another one of my videos, or else.